What's up Ozones, welcome to the Ozone and welcome to a video that I'm so excited to make. Uh, first of all, before we get into this, Tales from the Peterplex number one Lanny's game comes out tomorrow, so expect some audiobooks tomorrow. Uh, they might be a little bit slow this time around, but uh, they will be out hopefully within the full week. Um, we will have the full audiobooks. Um, but this is actually something completely different. This is the preview for Haps. Somehow we have an audiobook preview and my amazing friend on my Discord server, Fanafi, has made a transcript of the audiobook. So we're going to read through this and I guess make our own audiobook for it. I have not read this yet, so I have no idea what this is about. Apparently it's about the third story in Haps, which is the one with the, the robot boy. So this is going to be really interesting. Let's just get straight into this. Once Billy was comfortable with his new knowledge and skills, he discovered that he was experiencing what felt like incoherence in his system. Billy's reading suggested that this incoherence might have been a condition called cognitive dissonance. I've heard of that before. Cognitive dissonance, Billy had learned, was the mental unrest that accrued when a being, usually a human, felt conf held conflicting beliefs or attitudes. The reason Billy concluded that he had this condition was that his senses were reporting to him two states of reality that were with odds at each other. Billy, being an animatronic, didn't exactly have beliefs or attitudes, but he did have a sense of self, and he was beginning to recognise that his sense of self was fractured. On the one hand, Billy knew himself to be a robot. On the other hand, his sensory experience of himself was that of a human being. In other words, Billy was a robot, but his physical systems were those of a human. This was becoming more and more unsettling to Billy. He decided he had to do something about it. This is so crazy <laughs> already. Like, this is really cool to see, right, like, up front that this is an animatronic human. I don't know if this is the audiobook transcript or if it's just a summary, but either way, we're going to be learning about the third story, so it's fine. Um, Billy's decision to create coherence was a catalyst for a lot of research over the coming days. How could he create consistency between what he knew himself to be and what his senses reported him to be? After reading and exploring potential options, Billy concluded that he needed to replace his human appearing arms and legs with limbs that were more animatronic-like. This sounds more of a summary to me, I'm sorry. Uh, from what Billy concluded based on his research, this meant that he needed to switch out his current arms and legs for, prost for prosthetic arms and legs. This, Billy learned after even more research, required surgery. Thanks to his mom, Billy was familiar with seeking services, seeking services from other humans. He knew how to use the computer to look for what he needed. He did this now finding a list of surgeons in his area. Starting with the top name on the list, he dialed the assigned number. When a friendly woman's voice answered the phone, Billy stated his needs. Hello, my name is Billy. I am, a seek I am seeking a surgeon who will remove my arms and legs and replace them with prosthetics. Billy's auditory senses registered the sound of a gasp coming through the phone. The woman, not sounding as friendly, asked, Why do you need all your limbs removed? Do you have a sy system systemic, systemic infection? Billy ran this question through his processor. Processor, no, sorry. No, I have no infection. I have cognitive dissonance, and my limbs are not consistent with my identity. Billy was careful not to say that his identity was animatronic because he was still running his mom's programming regarding keeping his robotic nature a secret. A dial tone suddenly buzzed in Billy's ear. This informed him that the woman had hung up. Billy moved on to the next number. Forty minutes later, Billy had gone through every surgeon in the region surrounding his small town. He had received responses similar to the first one from every office he called. What was the next logical step? Billy got up and laid down on his recharging station. He felt like his systems were depleted. Perhaps when he rebooted, he would be able to find the surgeon he needed. The process that led Billy to his surgeon ended up being far more protractive than the steps of his original plan. This was because his current programming was deficient in intercessions of surgery and how the medical system in general functioned. Billy had to access an extensive network of new databases before he located a surgeon who agreed to perform the required operations in a city within driving distance. Billy concluded that after an exhausting search that licensed surgeons would not perform the surgeries Billy required. 
Logically, Billy decided this meant that an unlicensed surgeon might be able to provide the needed service. Accordingly, Billy began searching for each for such a surgeon, and he found one, a disruptible doctor who had lost his license because of malpractice lawsuits relating to unspecified substance abuse and health issues, who was willing to do any surgeries asked of him if the fees satisfied him. When Billy's data downloads led him to the man, just call me Dark, the fee requested was well within the budget Billy had assigned to his project. This isn't going to happen overnight, you know, Doc told Billy over the phone after he agreed to proceed with Billy's plan. Doc coughed heavily. Every time we lap off a limb, uh, every time we lap off a limb or take off a limb or something, uh, obviously there's going to be spelling mistakes, uh, your body will need time to recover. That's interesting to me. Hmm. Let me know what you guys think about this. Um, this was just a short video going through this, but this is very interesting stuff, and I'm excited to read the full story. Lally's Game is out tomorrow. Haps is out two months later. Uh, yeah, thank you for watching, and I'll see you then. Goodbye.